Today we're going to talk about the overhead athlete, specifically pitching. We have Dr. Ryan Krupp here with us today from Norton Sports Health. So if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself and why that topic interests you so much. Um, basically grew up playing any kind of sport uh, under the sun, baseball, basketball, football. Um, came to Louisville from Ohio as a chemical engineer actually. And then I went um, back to med school and residency here at the University of Louisville. I went to a fellowship at Stedman Hawkins Clinic of the Carolinas, really with the goal of being able to do anything in sports, but particularly shoulders and shoulder reconstruction. And I have a very vested interest in this, not only from my own background, but I actually have a son who's 10, who's an avid baseball player as well. So I get to see this on a daily basis. So it's a, it's a really, it's a big thing in my own heart uh, and in the athletes and the, the folks that I take care of. So if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about what types of injuries you see um, specifically in pitchers. Sure. Um, you know, it, it varies a little bit based on the age, but some of the most important things, particularly in the younger years, is elbow and shoulder injuries. Um, often they're related to growth plate type injuries from overuse. Um, there's many things that can lead to those problems, uh, both mechanics, uh, poor uh, uh, technique, not warming up appropriately, not really doing the right things in the off season, um, not having adequate periods of rest in between pitching. So there's a lot of things, and, and then the most important one is overuse. So pitching too many pitches at a, a given setting. So as a physician who deals with athletes on a, you know, a daily basis, as well as, like you said, a father who coaches baseball and has a young son, what are the concerns long-term effect with the overuse of young pitchers? Well, it's very important because something that's small initially can actually become a much bigger problem. Uh, so something that maybe has a little tendonitis or a little irritation that's ignored and people try to push through, the old adage, oh, just, you know, just push through the pain. Well, that doesn't always work, particularly in the developmental years. And so you might have a growth plate injury, uh, particularly at the like, medial part of the elbow, that then causes long-term growth disturbance and changes in the overall mechanics of the elbow. Um, the thing, same thing can happen in the shoulder. So you and I both know that research continues to show that these injuries are increasing. And there's been a lot of discussion about it, even with somebody as you know popular, so to say, as Dr. James Andrews. So what do you think is holding people back from really understanding the effects this can have on young kids? You know, I think that um, for many people, you know, it's all about winning. And it's all about, you know, my son or daughter is going to be the next great ex and you fill in the blank. And so sometimes we, we often, in sports particularly, it's that whole thing you got to work harder, push harder. And, you know, just a little ache and pain is not a big deal. You're just being a whip. You know, that's the old, the old adage. And that's not always the case. We really need to listen to our body. When you have a young youngster, you know, most kids really want to play. So when someone's telling you my elbow hurts, my shoulder hurts, and they can't throw, that's a red flag that this is probably legitimate. And so you got you really need to take you know, uh, credence at that. And if you rest and it's just not going away, it needs to be evaluated by a, an expert and treated accordingly. Now, how would you encourage, kind of in sports in general, like how would you encourage parents and coaches to handle, specifically kids I would say younger than high school, handle their um, athletic experience throughout the year? So I think it's very important that I mean, ultimately it really should be fun. When, when you lose that, I mean, we really lost the essence of why we're playing sports to begin with. But we all want our kids to do better. And I mean, obviously I coach and we're always trying to push the, the athlete to, to reach their maximum potential. Well, that also includes making sure that they have the right um, prehab, if you want to call it that. So training in the off season, getting ready for the season, that we're allowing adequate periods of rest during the season because you, at the end of the day, you can't reach your maximum potential if you don't have the adequate periods of rest to be able to, to um, do well in practice, to have the right mechanics. Ultimately, it's going to affect performance. So that's really the, the most important thing is making sure that we're doing it in a regimented fashion. And that doesn't mean pitching seven days a week. That means if you pitch on Saturday, you might have, you know, depending on how many pitches you throw, you may have three or four days of rest before you're able to pitch again. So, you know, there's very good evidence to show that having adequate periods of rest, limiting pitch counts, particularly early on, and not adding too many pitches in, and we can talk a little bit about when you should add certain things in, um, those are critical to the life uh, of, a, pace, or of a, a pitcher's arm. 
So if you want to talk just a little bit about when you should add certain pitches in, um, feel free to sure, speak so, on that a little bit. So the, the first thing is just learn how to throw the baseball. And so it's funny, a lot of kids even, and my son included, you know, their hands develop at a different rate. So even just holding the ball with the, pr the pr correct grip can be an issue. And so they start with almost like a palm ball, which later becomes a change-up. And then they gradually take fingers away till they get to the you know, typical two-finger grip. So that's the first thing is seeing how they develop. And, you, and it's not the same for every kid. Once they kind of master that, they're mastering mechanics, being able to throw strikes, being able to um, have good mechanics when they're on the mound, they're not having problems during those off days. You know, if they start to get 10 or so, depending on the, the, the athlete, once again, you start adding a changeup, which is essentially the same throwing motion. However, it's just how you hold the ball. And then it really, to the, about the age of 14, um, that's really when like a curveball comes in, and that should be the next pitch if you're going to add another pitch. I know that everybody watches the Little League World Series, and they see these you know kids at 12 years old throwing curveballs. And the bottom line is there's a lot of good evidence that's not a good idea. Now, do you have that one kid who's just totally developed and they've come along that maybe at 13 get away with it and I'm sure there's somebody can you can show an example that see they didn't have a problem but we all can find examples of things but I can show you 20 examples for every one of those that did have a major issue and the the, the kid who basically threw too many times through pitches too early who couldn't throw at all by the time they were in high school well and of course how many people in the little league world series actually move on you know it's very rare that you see that so. it's very rare particularly from pitchers yeah so if you don't mind, we'll uh, head up to the evaluation table and you can talk a little bit about uh, what you look for during an evaluation. Sure, so some of the first things, you know, obviously we, take, we start off with, you know, the history. You can learn a lot just by talking to an athlete and talking to the parents. You know, first we start to schedule. You know, so what, tell me a little bit about the, an average week in your athlete's life. And it's amazing, you know, um, actually talking about Andrews, he gives a story where he talks about a white marker board and he hands it to the, pa the patient's family and says, write everything they've accomplished, I'll be back in 15 minutes. And they're the point where they're like writing in the margins, they can't write on the back, because all these things, and he goes, that's the problem. It's just too much, especially at a very young age. So we talk about the history, where's the pain? Um, is it shoulder, is it elbow? Is it only with throwing? Um, does it get better with rest? So when you have pain that doesn't get better with rest, that's a big red flag. We know we're progressing. Or I have an athlete that throws, it hurts, gets better with rest, but as soon as they throw that first ball, all of a sudden they have pain again. So we learn a lot by based on history. Once we get to the location, so is it shoulder? Is it here up along the growth plate? So this is a key area that we see little leaguer shoulder, which is a, it's an injury to the physis or the growth plate of the shoulder. At the elbow, the most common place is on the inside of the elbow. Everybody's heard of Tommy John. So that's the ulnar collateral ligament here. As we get older, the ligament's the weak part. When we're younger, it's the place where the ligament attaches, which is at the medial epicondyle. So little ears elbow occurs here. And so oftentimes a patient will come in and I can just feel him and they're, and they're like, oh, hey, that hurts, that hurts, that's where it's at. Um, another thing is we're looking at the elbow, we'll often stress the elbow. And so if you have ligament laxity, I would say that's a big red flag. But even without laxity, if it hurts in that spot, particularly in our younger patients, that's a sign that they may have an impending issue with the growth plate at that location uh, from the origin of the ligament. We go to the shoulder, so we start looking at motion. So basic motions, so we go forward elevation, both the patient doing that that's active or passive. We test down here at the side with rotation. We oftentimes will look behind the patient as they go back in internal rotation. So these are some of the basic measurements. And in the same regard, we'll test strength. So forward elevation, we push up against resistance. External rotation, we'll rotate it out against resistance. Internal rotation here. So these are some of the major uh, things. Biceps, we'll pull hard here. Push for triceps. We kind of come up with deltoid. There's multiple things we can test just in a, in a small, quick uh, setting here. One of the key things for pitchers also is the rotation they have with the arm in, in this kind of, we call the cocking phase, because as they come back, this is an area of a lot of stress and strain across the shoulder. So you can see here, we've got really good external rotation, and then we'll check that versus internal rotation. And one of the things we'll see sometimes in pitchers is they'll get a tight posterior capsule. So what happens is oftentimes they keep rotating back and they get more and more extra rotation. So if anybody's ever watched baseball and they see Randy Johnson or some of the other pitchers, they get a ton of extra rotation, which is where they get their velocity. Well, what will happen is 
if they're not stretching, doing capsular stretches throughout the year, or they're starting to break down, they'll start getting tightness in the back of the capsule, in the back of the shoulder. All of a sudden, they'll start losing internal rotation. So we'll test people side to side and compare. So we talk about an arc of motion. So the arc of motion from external to internal rotation may be different from side to side. And if it's a, a significant deficit, that's a problem. And that's a sign to us that either something's going on in the shoulder or there is setup for something to go on in the shoulder. Um, some of the stretches and band work and those same motions that I just showed we'll do and we'll use bands to work in the off season particularly or even in season uh, to maintain that strength or that resistance of the rotator cuff muscles. So we all talk about beach muscles, everybody works out biceps and all these other things, but it's the under muscles and throwing that are so important because that's what really provides the drive of the shoulder and protects the shoulder because not only is it this, this phase here where they put a lot of stress, but as you come through, it's a very traumatic event throwing a baseball. It's not natural. And so there's a ton of force and velocity generated and then it has to decelerate or slow down. And so those muscles are all contracting during that. And those can also be injured during that phase of, of the uh, throwing motion. In addition to just the general things we see, it's very important to know the mechanics. So everyone looks at their shoulder. So we saw about rotator cuff exercise and stretching and, and, and strengthening, but the core and the legs are the key, the drive that really provides a lot of that power. And if you don't have, if you have weak uh, core and uh, hip musculature, and you don't develop those accordingly, and you're not driving, and you're using all your arm to throw, you're a setup for injury. Um, so if you guys are interested in learning more about what we've talked to today, we're actually having a free throwing clinic over at Legends on January 21st from 1 to 3 o'clock. Um, and if you wouldn't mind just telling them a little bit more about what we're going to do that day. So this is a program we've been doing uh, several years, and we're fortunate enough to have the Legends facility to use this year so we can expand upon that. And the whole idea is to educate parents, coaches, and even the athletes about healthy shoulder mechanics, what's the right way to train, uh, what, how the importance of the off-season period. Uh, we've got, we're fortunate enough to have a couple different pieces. So from my perspective, not only is it from injury prevention, but an injury treatment, but also we're gonna have Chad Reineke, who actually pitched in the majors. Uh, wealth of knowledge, talking about mechanics, the importance of the off-season programs, uh, we also have Michael Ballback, who uh, works with court the physical therapy. He's going to be looking more from a sports performance and some of the things you can do in the off-season training. And so um, I think it'll be very educational and it'll be a good opportunity for, for the folks to come out and uh, interact with us and, and, um, and really go over some of the things that are very important in, in pitchers and try and prevent injury. Thank you so much for joining us.